Today we're heading off, if you can see, we're leaving the waste galley where we had a very nice breakfast. And so we're heading out to the Pine Island Glacier up here and we're going to install an automatic weather station. We hope a weather station will be installed in Antarctica. Five, six, seven. <laughs> this landing site looks safe enough. We touched down. Yeah. We had a massively disappointing day yesterday, not being able to uh, find a suitable landing spot on the ice shelf, although we were able to land there. We weren't going to be able to get all our cargo on there in a safe flight, so we had to reconstruct the science program, and uh, one of the things we really wanted to do is get more weather information from here. This is the biggest data gap in meteorological information anywhere in the world. So we need a weather station here. We've got one with us. So last night we looked at uh, looked at the maps, looked at imagery, and picked some sites that it would do the most good. This was our highest priority site. So we got to be excited that we can land here. I think the pilot's smiling. I think he likes this this spot. It's a lot softer than softer snow than where we were on the ice shelf. The sun's high in the sky, and we've got a team of three people that are that are going to use the next three days to set up this automatic weather station. So we'll, we'll have something to show for our time down here. I flew back to Waste Divide, leaving David and the two mountaineers to start work. Good thing we got Mr. Happy Camper with us. That's Senor Happy Camper to you. <laughs> Let's get rid of this burrito. Job one was erecting the Scott tent in case of sudden changes in the weather. Pine Island Camp would have some of the conveniences at home, and the views were better, but colder. They wrestled the solar panels into place, but worried that soon their own weight would drive them down into the snow. Happy Camper School, you learn to secure guy ropes with wood you bury in the snow. The instructors call that a dead man. David had his own idea about how to keep the instruments in place. So dead man, basically, Galen's going to take an ice pick, bludgeon me to the chest, all the hair in kind of this position with a, a guy wire. This is a, this is a dead man. And that's how it works. That's how you pretty much, you need four dead people to, to hold out one solar panel. So we're ready to wire up the power station that powers the weather station behind you. We have two cables for the solar panels that run into the solar charge controller. Two white cables for the black wind turbines that also run in here, but they're not charge controlled. Supposedly, if the wind blows too hard, these devices know how to dump the extra wind energy. Hopefully, it's always in the black, and there's lots of electricity to keep the weather station going. With no chance to fly in new batteries before next year, the weather station had to generate its own power. This is the tower. AWS automatic weather station that we're going to leave out here at Pine Island. This pit, Galen Doug, is three feet deep. The tower is in steps. The first is a three foot base that we're going to bury immediately today. And the remainder of the tower is two seven foot sections. Each year or two, we'll add another seven foot section and extend and move the instruments up. We expect this to be an accumulation zone. We don't know how much accumulation yet, and so we don't know how often we need to add tower pieces. 
Our first device here is humidity. The next device is a GPS, and that's accurate enough that we can keep uh, track of the movement of this glacier. We expect the temperature in winter here to drop to minus 50 in uh, some cases, and so we want to be able to record those extreme temperatures. Again, with a shielded uh, temperature device so we don't get a wind chill effect from that. This camera is good for extremely low temperature, so we expect it to survive the winter here. We'll be taking pictures with this approximately uh, once an hour, and this shows the wind direction via a compass, which is here, and wind speed via the rate of rotation of the propeller. We're measuring the barometric pressure, but because of wind fluctuations and essentially the Venturi effect, the pressure you measure is incorrect if there's high wind speed. And the only way you can really correct for that is by having this kind of device which filters out the wind speed and just gives you the mean atmospheric pressure as it varies between high and low. This is a sonic snow depth device. It makes, uh, sends out a sound pulse and we're using time and travel uh, we can calibrate this and figure out the depth of the snow surface. Every last piece of this is sensitive. So as we're rigging this up now, if we break anything, we're f***ed. <laughs> really. There is no second of this anywhere. Our weather station was wired to send back data all through the long Antarctic winter. This is the brains of the weather station. Above us, in an orbital plane from north to south, there are 11 satellites around the Earth. Every 10 minutes, one passes overhead, and we can speak to it via this green antenna here. It's an iridium antenna. And this here is basically a telephone. Uh, this computer program can talk to the iridium make a phone call and send data to my computer in New York City. So there I pick it up and then I put it on the, on the web, all the measurements. Those guy ropes and dead man anchors held the tower steady enough that Galen could make adjustments 14 feet up above the ice. This snow sensor here, uh, it shoots a, a ray down to the ground and right now it's kind of pointing down but then the ray that's going to bounce back shoots off into the middle of nowhere so we got to adjust it a little bit. I just realized I'm loosening up the wrong thing. <laughs> we have a, we've been here three days now, and everything's been going just great. You can see in the background, we got the weather tower set up, and to the side of that, you can see the solar panels and wind turbine. It's been very uh, almost balmy here the last few days, and uh, when we've also attracted some visitors here, some skua, who are very interested in our presence. David and company were feeling pretty good. Little did they know. Back at Waste, as usual, it was bad weather. The AWS team had finished their work, but we couldn't go fetch them, even though we knew they were anxious to be back. We're carrying out research in such remote locations, uh, not because they're remote, but because that's where interesting science is happening, and that's where we have to go to. These places are extremely difficult to get to, and at the moment, they're even more difficult to get back from. Finally a break, and the Twin Otter could fly. The AWS team had gotten the weather station up and running. Now they were heading home.
This was truly a high point in Antarctic science. Thank you.